Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Baltimore Positive. It is positively festivus around here. You know, I, I did not hang the purple rope lights, and uh, my next guest could probably have some appreciation for that. I bought like 10 sets of purple rope lights back after Christmas in 2006, and, and they weren't good luck. And then I brought them out last year, and I wore them, and I strung them, and they weren't good luck. So I'm putting the damn things away. And I'm not even stupid-stitious, uh, even though I ran into David Modell pictures this week. He's the most superstitious person I know. But I, we're going to exercise all demons. I'm going through all eras over 25 years of Ravens football to bring back some great guests and some friends. Double J joins us now from uh, his fishing estate somewhere um, near water in Florida. Looks like he's got the uh, dolphin ears coming out of his head. You know, your room raiders a fail right now, uh, Jared. I don't know. You, you, you look like part dolphin. I don't know. What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. Just, uh, just been hanging out, you know, not doing much here lately. Well, fishing is a socially distanced thing, right? So for everybody yeah. who fished, like this – the, the plague doesn't bother you all that much, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely been a nice escape over this past year is, you know, being able to get out of the water and get away from everybody. So, yeah, that is a good thing. Well, you're not around this. You've been, you know, flying in, doing games for years. This year you're not. Yeah. I, you're watching this from afar. Just – I haven't talked to you in a while, man. I mean, we're all chums. I mean, just – Catch me up. What, what's the last seven, eight, nine months been like for you? Then we'll get to some football because I think we've all been sort of rocked by this in one way or another, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We, yeah, it was, it was um, you know, we were making a pretty big move, um, me personally. We were, um, you know, going to get back into, uh, come back into, into town. We actually purchased a house back in Baltimore. We're going to get back into the, around the city. And, um, and then COVID just shut everything down so uh, ever since then you know the season was up in the air and um you know a lot of uncertainty and so we ended up selling the house we bought up there and then pretty much just been doing nothing i mean just you know kids and you know projects around the house and stuff like that but yeah it it, it really it really shut down um what, what what was going on in my life so um, but it's been, it's, you know, there's been a silver lining. It's been good. It's been a lot of family time and stuff like that. But definitely feel um, removed from the season and the team and the city and everything. So it has been a little different. Boy, you bought a house. You were gonna live. In. You love Baltimore, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Baltimore's our second home. You know. What what is it that you love? I mean, you know, I mean, you're a Southern guy. You played out in San Diego. They don't have a team anymore. But, um, you, you know, I, I've always seen you here. There's something about when I go out, and I don't go out anymore because none of us do, but when I used to go out back in the day, you know, I, I rarely went out without being in a room or running into one of you, you know, alums. Yeah. You know, my wife and I walked through the harbor every Saturday this summer, and we ran into Femi. Every week. And if we didn't yeah. run into Femi, we ran into McCrary. And if right. we're not running into McCrary, I'm running into Trevor Price or Matt Stover up in Hunt yeah. Valley or Kyle Richardson. I mean, there is something about, like, y'all wanting to be here when you don't need to be. Well, I mean, you, you know, that's a testament to the to the organization and, and the team itself. I mean, guys, you know, when I was in San Diego, um, when I left there – um, or actually when I got there, I was shocked how many former players were disgruntled and hated the organization, hated their experience there. They, they left on bad terms that they never mended. Um, there was some contract dispute or there was – Geez, Weddle something. came here 10 minutes ago with the same – I mean, Eric Weddle was unhappy. I mean, God, if you don't love Eric Weddle, you don't love people, right? Literally. Well, uh, yeah, I know. And it, and it was like that for everybody from LaDainian Tomlinson to, I mean, you, any of them. You can name any of the former players there that were a big name, and there were very few of them that had a positive experience um, with the team and the organization. Now, that um, – I didn't have that experience. You know, I, I – Whatever, but my point is, is that Baltimore is not like that. Baltimore, whether they leave under, um, you know, contract disputes or whether the team releases them or, or whatever, the team does such a great job reaching out to former players and giving them opportunities, bringing them back in town for appearances, just wanting them to be around the organization, coming in and speaking to players. Um, 
you know, there, it is a open door invitation, open door policy with Coach Harbaugh and Dick Cass and, and the rest of the staff. Um, and it's, it's why when you go on a game day, you know, it's, it's, it's not uncommon for me to run into four or five of my former teammates. Jared Johnson is here, and you can, uh, you can keep up with him. Sometimes he appears in Baltimore on social media, sometimes usually with a fish or a football helmet one way or another. Well, here we are again, man. Uh, you know, it's January. We're in the playoffs. This particular group of players, I mean, uh, 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 Justin Tucker and Sam Cook and Anthony Levine maybe aside, most of these guys haven't won a playoff game. You know, it's been yeah. since 2014 since they've won a playoff game. The last two years, Chargers first, Titans last year. Uh, you were there. You saw it all unfold. Where we are right now, the last five weeks, they, they've changed the offensive line, retooled things. They're getting more members of the defense back. They're on the road. It's not even the road anymore like normal. Should we have higher expectations than maybe we do? Because I don't really expect them to go to Tampa and win the Super Bowl five weeks from now. But stranger things have happened. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a different team uh, or a different situation than it was last year, you know, going to the playoffs 14-2 and two, and, you know, all the momentum in the world and healthy and, you know, this, this new offense that everybody was excited about. This year's a little different than, you know, uh, Lamar struggled in some areas that he, that, he, that he didn't struggle so much last year. You know, the injuries and the COVID stuff. Um, you know, but this team, you know, I think the city has just as much, um, you, you know, can, should be just as excited last year as they were this year. And the playoffs are a funny thing. You know, a lot of times when the team that looks to be the favorite or that looks to be, you know, the, the one to look out for, the one that was the most exciting throughout the season. It's not always the team that does well in the NFL playoffs. It's the toughest team. It's the team that's been battle-hardened. It's the team that has overcome some adversity through the, throughout the season and is ready for the playoffs. And this might be that team, you know, because – They've gone through all the COVID stuff. They, they've lost the majority of their um, premier players have gone through the COVID protocol. And so essentially you can erase that out of your mind. Pittsburgh is just now going through all that stuff. They're just now starting to lose players um, with the COVID and, and, and all the protocol stuff that's going on. And, um, and you see how they played late in the year. So, um, Baltimore, even though I know it's a different expectations and a different field of the season ending this year as it was last year, um, but this is still a team to, to, to look out for. This is a team that can do well in the playoffs. Jared Johnson is our guest, joining us uh, from Florida, but pulling for Alabama, uh, no doubt. Uh, another year, uh, another playoff berth here for the Ravens and Bama. Uh, you know, the college football side of things this year, I mean, you, you're probably the best guy to ask because you wore both helmets, in college and pro. As a player and what the players went through this year, I mean, you're only five years removed from it, right? I mean, it could have been you to be involved in it. Some thoughts about what the players have endured here. And, and when I see the college thing, it really does sort of disgust me a little bit. I, I watched the for the coin toss. I thought, everybody here is making money but the players. Like, in the middle of a plague, they're making all of this money for television – sort of skeeved me out even more than college football usually does, Jer. Yeah, uh, yeah. don't get me started on college football. I mean, college, college – Division One college football may be the most ridiculous sport in the world. I mean, it, it really is. I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, all the dumb rules and, and the, 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 the um, postseason schedule. And, and it's so clearly – economic and for profit but then they hide behind the pageantry and the tradition and all the things that that um that they like to well, how about the education let's hiding behind the fact that the educate uh, the institution is what sanctions this that's the uh, part that they, i they, that, they, that they loses act, me right they act so pure of heart and what's you know i live in college football land i mean people in the south that's all they care about is college football and you hear this all i have to hear you know all the time about how they, people don't watch the NFL because NFL is all about the money and college football is all about the tradition. And you, it's just laughable. It is laughable. And the fact that, you know, I, I don't know, you know, the, the fact that you have teams playing six games and are 
going into the playoffs, but then you have undefeated teams who played full schedules in their own conference are at some – the Weed Eater Bowl in Wichita, Kansas or something. You know, it's just – it's laughable, but you know, it's not going to change anytime soon. But um, you know, as far as Alabama's concerned, I mean, you know, it was probably one of the more entertaining seasons I've ever seen. You know I mean? To, to play a full SEC schedule week in and week out, not have to play, you know, some division one double A school. I mean, to me, that's what it should be every year. I mean, you play your conference and then you have a playoff at the end of the year, a real playoff, not a four team joke. Um, but, um, but as far as Alabama was concerned, it, it was phenomenal to watch. I mean, they, they played, you know, all, what, 10 SEC games? I mean, it's phenomenal. Well, I mean, college football's fun if you're an Ohio State fan or a club. You know, I mean, if you're a fan of one of four or five teams, it's cool for you. But for everybody right. else, it's – It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. You know, so what, Cincinnati and Central Car- – or is it Coastal Carolina both went undefeated. And I don't even know where they went. I don't even know what bowl game they went to. You yeah, know, I mean, they didn't get the Weed Eater Bowl. Uh, for you with the Ravens in this offense and the retooling, and we talk so much about Marshall leaving, uh, you know, one of your former teammates there that I hope you run into, but you might not recognize him. He's half the man. Yeah, yeah, he looks great. Yeah, I mean, he, you know, he got rid of it quick. Uh, the, the offense – had to be different this year. You know, the whole team was going to be different this year. Um, what they did with tight ends and they lose Boyle. This thing we've seen the last four or five weeks, even against, you know, maybe the lesser lights in the league, but 400 yards again is 400 yards in the NFL, right? I mean, still guys yeah. out there like you on the Cincinnati side trying to make tackles on Sunday. What they've done the last month, impressive enough for you to think that they can do this and run a table. Um, yeah, you know, it's definitely been different this year. And I haven't watched them, obviously. Uh, you know, I've just been watching TV copies when I can – when I when they're on, you know. So, I haven't – last year, you know, I was watching game film and really studying. So, I knew the ins and outs of the offense. But one thing that was glaring, you know, when you watch them on TV is just, um, you know, not – you don't want to call it vanilla, uh, but just how everything last year was new and explosive and – you know, there was different wrinkles and all the, the weapons and tight ends that they had um, with the three-headed monsters with the tight ends. And this year, you know, you, you, know, you lose two of the three. Um, and, and it goes to show, show what type of player and boy, even though he didn't catch a lot of passes, you know, the, that guy is, you know, one of the better all-around tight ends I've ever seen. You know, I mean, as far as, as dominating as – he reminds me of a, of, a, of a bigger, stronger Heath Miller. Not, you know, not so much in – You muted out on me, Jay. Uh, Double J, you muted out on me with your phone. COVID and everything. And, you know, people, you know. Jared, understand. I missed that part. When your phone rang, you, you muted out on me. I, I missed the part oh, where you sorry. were talking about uh, uh, the offensive line. Go, go back to that. Well, I mean, with Nick Boyle. I mean, I mean just, you know, I was just talking, I was talking about Boyle, lo- losing Boyle and, and um, you know, and then use, losing a Marshall Young. You can't lose guys like that and not have a drop off in the offense. And, and um, you know, but, um, you know, and then I think uh, the biggest, the most glaring thing is the, the difference from last year is, is, um, is Lamar's confidence throwing the ball. You know, last year he was doing a really good job converting on third downs, getting to more running situations, allowing the offense to be more creative. And this year, you know, a little more stagnant at times, a little more inconsistent throwing the ball downfield. Um, he seems more guarded at times. So to me, that has been the, the most glaring difference from this year to last. Well, when Stanley went down, I thought they're really in trouble when it comes to winning yeah. the Super Bowl. Like winning yeah. these games without Ronnie Stanley and without Nick Boyle, I think that's going to be very difficult to do. And, they, you know, they struggled with Kansas City earlier. I think Buffalo's surging right now. I just don't think they're the best team in the tournament. But I think on any given Sunday, if you can't tackle Lamar, you're in trouble. And that's going to be the challenge for the next three weeks here. Yeah, they're definitely a, different, a, a, a team to contend with and a, and a dangerous team. Um, you know, preparing for Lamar is extremely tough. And then preparing for him and actually go out, going out and, and executing um, is, is, is an unbelievable feat in this league. So anytime you got Lamar under center, um, you've got a chance. Um, you know, but, you know, they were just so healthy last year. That, that's why the playoff loss to the Titans last year was so disappointing because it was such a dominant team and such a healthy team going into the playoffs. But, 
you know, this year it's, it's a different aspect and, and it's a different situation. But like I said before, a lot of team, a lot of times in the playoffs, that's the team that you want. You know, I remember, you know, going back to, to our years, you know, 2008, you know, we eked into the playoffs. Um, we were unbelievably injured, whether it was had a player out or not. I mean, everybody was dragging an arm, dragging a leg, um, you know, had braces all over the place. I remember Terrell playing with one arm, uh, Derek Mason having a separated shoulder. Uh, I mean, everybody was injured. But that was one of the toughest teams I've ever been around. It was a battle-hardened team. Had played every tough team in the NFL. And then so when we got to the playoffs, now we didn't finish the run. You know, we lost to the Steelers in the AFC Championship. Um, but nobody expected us to do anything. That, but that, that was an, an extremely battle-hardened, tough team. And, and this team can be the same thing. By the way, I learned a little while ago, the last time the Titans hosted a playoff game was then, was that game. Uh, yeah. and the field goal was Stover. So it's been a little while for them. Uh, right. Tackling Derrick Henry and, <laughs> and, and tackling Lamar, because I want to bring this up because it involves your buddy Weddle. Last year out in L.A., when the Ravens ran all over the Chargers, I'm down in the tunnel there at the Coliseum. And I thought it was a one. It was a beautiful night. I mean, I'd never been to the Coliseum. It's an NFL. It was, you know, probably never go back. It's crazy, right? So Weddle's in that tunnel with me and Jameson Hensley and and um, um, Zrebeck, and he said, "I practiced all last year. I told everybody what. And then when the speed of the game happened, we couldn't see the ball." Like, literally, we didn't know where the ball was. That was the thing he said about it, that there was a speed and that the RPO part of it, that if you don't know where the ball is, you're going to have a hard time. And if you can't see it, it's even worse, that there was a speed involved in that. And then there's Derrick Henry where you don't have to worry about that. You just need to tackle him, right? It's, it's a completely different kind of thing, right? You're talking about defending Derrick Henry or defending the Ravens? E- either way. I mean, yeah. it's, it's, it's difficult well, both yeah. ways. Yeah, so with the Ravens, you know, the key to them is definitely the RPO and then all the different weapons that they bring to the table. And, you know, they buy your eyes. And if you go back and look at that game in particular against the Rams, um, I believe that was on Monday Night Football. Um, was it Monday Night or fun, Sunday? It was I can't Monday remember. Night. Yeah, Monday Night Football. So, you know, but that game in particular, um, you know, when – you when you when you run a, an RPO style offense, you know everybody has to stay home. They have to key their responsibility. And if you get caught looking at the wrong thing for just a split second with a player like, when you watch, um, when you go back and watch that game, you know watch a, a safety drive down and and he might be a quarterback player, but then. He, he gets his eyes locked on the action in the backfield and he, his eyes lock on that running back for just a split second. By the time you get your eyes back to the quarterback, he's gone, you know, and, and the, the Ravens were clipping off, you know, 10, 15 yards a run just because their eyes were in the wrong spot and they were worried about other things than just their responsibility. The Titans are a totally different monster. I mean, they're not as – they don't have the deception and the, and the speed per se – but Derrick Henry, I mean, he just leans on you and wears on you. He's such a, a physical, demanding challenge for defense over time. That you, know, you saw in the Ravens game last year. I mean, some of those guys, by the end of the game, they just look like they didn't want to tackle him anymore. They were done with it. And he's just going to keep pounding, just keep coming downhill and lowering his pads. And, by the way, uh, I saw that in the SEC. I, I remember that season. My wife was sick that year, and I, I just remember sitting in her hospital room every Saturday watching Alabama play, and nobody wanted to tackle that kid. And no. I, I thought he was going to be a terror in the NFL in that way because it really – there are very few guys you can say that about that it looks like they you just don't want any part of him. Yeah. Gronkowski with a load kind of felt that way. Some guys in the league, but – but, but he's special. He's different. Yeah, he's different. He's definitely different. I mean, uh, I thought that his height and, and um, you know, just his length, I thought it was going to be a, a disadvantage in the league. I thought that, that guys were going to be able to come down and, and cut him down. Because in college, he was an upright runner. And when you're 6'3", six, 6'4", six, and an upright runner, that's not good in the NFL. And it's a testament to him and his work ethic and the type of player he is because he's a straight gym rat. 
um, his ability to get down below his pads and to run at a lower pad level to use those long arms as, as a stiff arm to keep players off of his legs. Um, and then just the little bit of elusiveness that he's able to set you up with um, is pretty unbelievable. And he, he's turned out to be one of the better power running backs that, that, I, that I've ever seen. I mean, he reminds me of a, a faster Brandon Jacobs. Um, you know, if you remember Brandon Jacobs when he played uh, for the Giants, I mean, he was like that. I mean, by the end of the game, I mean, you were just so sick of tackling this 6'4", 270-pound running back. I mean, just – I mean, it just hurt. It hurt to tackle this guy play in and play out. And if you didn't bring the right mental approach and, and um, physical demeanor to the game, I mean, you weren't going to last very long. Well, I miss you bringing your physical demeanor to the game, but I'm glad you bring it to our program here. We'll get everybody safe and get you back up here at some point, Double yeah. J. Uh, well, I appreciate it. Ravens alum. Maybe we'll have a uh, you know a third Super Bowl. Maybe on Purple Rain three before this is all over. They always sneak up on you, right? Like none of us yeah. are expecting much here. I might be calling you two, three weeks from now. We're still playing football though, right? It's, yeah. it's, it, yeah. it's not against all odds, right? Yeah. Oh no, no, I wouldn't count the Ravens out for sure. Well, hey man, take care of yourself. I'm glad you're safe down there. Go catch some fish for us, and uh, we'll stay in touch. All right. All right, man. Have a good one. We miss you, Jared Johnson. Number 95 in your program and uh, number one in your hearts uh, down there in Florida doing his thing and uh, very, very busy down there on the fishing scene. I got to go somewhere where it's warmer than this. I woke up chilly this morning. It must feels like playoff football around here. Big thanks to all of our sponsors for sticking with us uh, from our transition from WNSD.net over to BaltimorePositive.com. You can see all of our work there. Several Baltimore County executives, uh, uh, Johnny, uh, uh, Johnny O's going to be on. Calvin Ball's going to be here from Howard County. Stuart Pittman's going to be here from Anne Arundel County. Brandon Scott's here next week as well. A lot of leadership. We're going to do a lot of football here and a lot of New Year's stuff and some COVID stuff as well as getting you ready for football and the Tennessee Titans. I am Nestor. We are WNSD.net, AM 1570, Towson, Baltimore. We never stop talking. Baltimore positive.